What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing well. Now in this video, I'm gonna be making this beautiful end grain butcher block cutting board. This one is made from maple and walnut. It's a nice, easy design. It is a lot of work. There is a, is it, they are a bit labor intensive to make the end grain cutting boards, but they're the most highly sought after ones. There's multiple advantages to having an end grain cutting board. Um, it's much more durable. It doesn't dull the knives as quickly, which is why all the top chefs around the world use them with their highly expensive knives. And they also hide the knife marks much more easily. But there is a bit more work in putting them together. That's why they are a lot more expensive than other type of cutting boards and they make an absolutely fantastic gift to make for somebody. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video guys. Now it's shot over multiple days so there's any continuity issues that's why. So let's get on and do it and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and if you're new here think about subscribing that really helps me out a lot guys and as always comments and questions below I will get back to you. So let's crack on let's make this beautiful uh, maple and walnut ingrain cutting board. Now before we crack on, I just want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video and that is Tradeify. Now Tradeify is a complete job management platform designed for tradespeople. I'm an electrician, I'm self-employed, I'm working in the trades and I use a Tradeify and it saves me countless hours every week so I have no problem recommending it to you guys. So if you're in the trades, whatever you are, and you're on the tools all day, you struggle with the administration office other things, definitely check it out. It's a real time saver. It's all your administration in one place. It's desktop and phone based so you can carry your office switch in your pocket. It makes it extremely extremely easy to generate professional looking documents such as invoices and quotations. If you have a small crew working for you, they can all use the app as well and you can manage your crew, you can schedule jobs, you can share information about jobs, photographs, the whole lot. It takes care of everything for you and it saves time. That's the biggest thing I've found with it. So definitely check it out if you're on the tools all day. So there is a promo code man and shed which will give you 50% off for your first three months and there's also a 14 day free trial so there's no strings attached. Just head on over to Tradeify, I link it below in the description. Check it out, play around with it for 14 days, see how it can benefit you and your business. Believe me, it's a real time saver when it comes to office work and time is money, as you guys know. So definitely check it out. Like I said, everything will be linked below. Now, let's get on and make our beautiful end grain cutting board. Okay, let's crack on with this project. Now I have some 50 mil maple up here. I have a couple of pieces of it and that's what we're gonna use. So essentially two inch maple and I have some one inch walnut as well. So a little bit of walnut and a bunch of maple. Okay, so I just quickly sketched out what I'm doing here so I can see myself what I'm working to. So I'll quickly take you guys through it. So the length of our cutting board is going to be 450 millimeters. The width of our cutting board is gonna be 350 millimeters and the thickness is gonna be 50 mil. So that's about 16, that's 18 inches that way by, let's see, that's 12, that's an extra two. That's 16 inches this way. So 18 this way and 16 this way and it's gonna be two inches thick or 50 mil thick. So I need a bunch of maple blocks. I'm gonna cut my maple blocks to 50 by 50 or two inch by two inch. We need eight this way and we need seven this way. So very first thing we wanna do is go and dimension up this maple. And then we're gonna need a couple of walnut strips and they are going to be 25 or one inch thick by 50 mil in width or two inches in width. So one inch by two inch uh, walnut and two inch by two inch maple. If it doesn't make sense, it will very shortly. Let's do it. Okay, so here is my maple, here is my walnut. So it's one inch walnut and two inch maple. Now, we're gonna be doing long rips on this board and we're gonna dimension those then 50 by 50. And then when we're chopping them into sections to turn them up on end grain, I will be chopping this and turning each one up on end grain. So technically, I need this to be just longer than 350, allowing for all the curve of the blades for all the cuts that I have to do. Um, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna leave each board be 450. That gives me an extra 100 mil. It gives me plenty um, in case anything goes wrong that I might even have an extra block left over. It all makes perfect sense in a minute. So I'm gonna cut these to 450. I'm gonna uh, get two out of this, I reckon. And then I'm gonna have to do two cuts of 450 on the longer one, and that will give me the rest that I need. And then I will cut the maple or the walnut at 450 as well. We'll split this and we'll get two one inch by two inch or 25 by 50 mil boards out of this. And that will make our uh, walnut feature on either side. So let's get cutting. Okay, stop block set up. We have four cuts of 450 millimeters to do, so let's get on and do it. Thank you. 
Okay, so there's our boards cut up now. Just cut them into four sections because it's just easier to work with them, putting them into the planer thickness or things like that. They're just, it's easier to work with short boards. I could have made one big long board and ripped that. But like I said, this is easier to work with. So I need to get eight lengths of 50 by 50 or two inch by two inch maple. And I need two lengths of one inch by two inch or 50 by 25 walnut. So we got to take this to the planer thickness and now get these guys dimensioned up. And then we got to start running them through the bandsaw to cut them into the 50 50 by 50 or 2 inch by 2 inch strips. Let's do it. So I have my boards milled up so they are 50 millimeters in thickness here now or two inches But I've only done one side So I've done one side perfectly at 90 degrees to the face I've left the other side rough the reason being I'm going to cut these up on my bandsaw now If I had a table saw this is where a table saw really excels doing cutting boards in lots of long accurate rips And then the table saw really excels so what I'm gonna to have to do is run my plane 90 degree face against my bandsaw fence cut my piece take my piece that's left over run that back over the planer or the joint or take that freshly jointed or planed edge put that back against my uh, bandsaw fence and run that cut through again and so on and so forth so let's get cutting these i'm going to cut them just over 50 mil about 53 millimeters with my bandsaw that should give me enough for the curve for the blade and one run over the planer. And that should, we should have enough material to do it that way. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. Let's get on and do it. Okay, so there's all our pieces cut up. So that's what our glue up is going to look like. So now I just have to pass it back through the planer and or the thickness art and just do this edge so that they're perfectly square. So there's my face edge that I marked each time, ran it back over the planer, ran this against the fence of my bandsaw, which leaves me a rough cut on one side. So I'll be passing them through the planer like this to dimension all these to the correct thickness. Now, I have some planer snipe on some of these pieces, which is why I left them 100 millimeters uh, longer than it needed to be. That's to allow for all the curves of the blades of the cuts that I have to put into this when I do the second glue up and for any planar snipe. So I'm just feeling the ends of it. So I have planar snipe there. So I want to lose this end. Um, I want, there's another bit of planar snipe there. So I'm going to turn that around just so I know what way to pass these now back through the planar thickness are. So I have planar snipe there. So I'll send it in this way so that there will be snipe. All the snipe will be on one end that I can chop off. So uh, that's just one thing to check out and make sure you don't uh, mess this up because otherwise you'll have lots of gaps inside in your um, cutting board, which you do not want. So I just want to get all the snipe to one end, find all the pieces with snipe on them. That piece is actually pretty good. There's nothing on that. Should be able to feel it with your hand. A little bit there, so turn that one that way. Tiny bit there. Let's get them all facing the right direction. Look for the planar snipe. None on that one. That one is pretty good. We have there. So I'll put an arrow on all these now and I'll know what way to pass them back through the planer and there's snipe on that end as well. So these all have to go through this way.
Okay guys, there's all our pieces now milled up, ready to go. So we're just about ready for the glue up. So I have my eight pieces of two inch by two inch or 50 by 50 maple and my two strips of one inch by two inch walnut. And this is exactly how they're going to glue up. Now, we have a couple of decisions to make here how exactly we're going to glue this thing up. So we're going to have to, after our, this glue up, we will probably have to re-flatten this board again before we do our next cuts to turn everything on end grain for the second glue up. So you have to think about how you're going to dimension this board. So we have two options. I could split this in half and glue up this section and this section. That way these pieces can run back through my planar thicknesser because that board is not going to fit back through my planar thicknesser. Or I can glue the whole lot together just like this and flatten it with my hand plane which is exactly what I'm going to do I don't mind using my hand planes um, I can get a pretty good finish with them I can get a really flat surface with them so I'm going to just glue the whole lot up together and keep it as flat as I possibly can during the glue up pay extra but um, extra attention in the glue up so that I'd have very little work to do with my hand plane afterwards but if you're not confident with your hand plane like I said you can glue up this section, then glue up this section. You can run them over your joint or planar, planar thickness or whatever you want to call it. And then you can glue these two sections back together and uh, you can take it from there. But I'm going to do it all in one glue up. Now, another thing we want to do is grain orientation. So we're going to see the end grain of this maple and of the walnut. And there's a lot of straight grain in these pieces of maple that I have and they're all orientated vertically. So I'm going to actually... Um, do every second one in a different direction. So I'm going to go vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. So I'm actually going to turn these now so that I get a better uh, looking grain pattern on top when the board is finished. And then we'll mark it and that's going to be our glue up. So let's do that now. Okay, anyway, so here is our end grain pattern. This is what we're going to see. So we'll have lots of blocks just like this. Now, like I said, a lot of this is very vertical grain. So it ended up being quarter sawn maple. Uh, it'd actually be great stuff for guitar neck blanks, but we're making a cutting board, not guitar necks. Uh, so I have lots of vertical grain. So what I'm going to do is turn every second one. So the grain is now horizontal. This one is vertical. We'll turn this guy. We'll turn this one and we'll turn this one and now we just have grains running in different directions rather than having them all run vertical uh, it just adds a little bit to the pattern of the uh, butcher block top when we cut all this we'll have grains running in different directions again it's just a little detail uh, something to pay attention to now this is ready for the glue up so i'm just gonna mark this like this so i can see exactly uh, what's the top and what way it needs to be glued up okay let's get on and do it Okay guys, so I am now ready for the glue up. I just have a piece of plastic bag on top of my MFT table to stop the glue dripping onto it. I have two clamping coils prepared with some masking tape. So these are just the offcuts of the maple. Uh, it's a good flat edge. It's nice and solid, so that will sit there and that will sit there. I've done a couple of test runs on the glue up so I know I'm good to go. I'm going to be using tight bond tree because it's waterproof and that's what I'm going to be using for this chopping board because this will be getting washed down. It's also food safe uh, ish. So it says food safe um, for indirect food contact. So it should be good enough for this. Now, I'm going to get on and glue this thing up. I'm here on my own, so I can't video the whole process. Once I get started, I have to crack on and do it. So it's just a case of get everything ready, do a couple of test runs, make sure you're happy with everything, make sure everything is ready to go and to hand, and then just start your glue up. There's not much more to it than that. So I'm just going to take all these pieces now and get glue on the faces that it needs to go on. And as always, I'm just going to be spreading this on by hand. So it's going to be a pretty liberal application of glue on each part. So we'll have plenty of squeeze out, but not to worry.
Okay guys, there we go, all glued up. Not too much stress involved in that. So I have a clamping coil top and bottom. Plenty of parallel jaw clamps on. Just stood them up, cleaned off the end of the um, board as well as the top with a damp cloth. I'll have a little bit of cleaning on my clamps to do, but I let the glue go off because it's easy to scrape it off. But most of the gunk is gone off it now. So I'm just gonna let that sit back down. And we can leave that overnight to do its thing and uh, we should be good to go. Right, so guys, it is a few days later. This thing has well and truly set up now, so that glue is well and truly gone off. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's a few days later, so I've no idea where I am in the video. So if I repeat myself, you'll have to forgive me, but uh, what's new? I always do anyway. So let's get this out of the clamps. We'll, um, oh God, we'll get flattening this board get dimensioning it up and we get ready for the second glue up. Okay, so here we are. We're all glued up. I have a little bit of tidying up to do on this, a little bit of cleaning up uh, glue marks and stuff. Not too much. It is relatively flat. A couple of little high and low spots here and there. We're going to hit this now with the hand plane. I need to flatten off this side and flatten off the other side because essentially uh, this side and this side will become our jointable edges. Now, like I said in a previous part of this video, I think you could do this in two stages or even three stages, depending on how thick or how wide or how big a capacity your jointer or your planer has. You can pass these back through and then glue them again. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do it in one whip. I kept it as absolutely as flat as I could. So a uh, few strokes of the hand plane and this thing should be pretty much good to go. Then we can start dimensioning it up for our second glue up. So let's do it. Okay, so that's starting to feel pretty good. I'm just gonna take a straight edge and just run it across it. Just have a look for any higher low spots, any gaps, any little areas I need to take down. And uh, it's actually looking pretty good there now. So that side is just about ready. We'll flip it over and do the other side. Guys, I've flattened both sides to where I'm pretty happy with it. Now I need to start dimensioning this up again. So we need to run cuts across this um, roughly at 50 millimeters. I'm actually going to cut, leave it a little bit over 50 millimeters because I'll have some sanding to do both sides. Now, my miter saw hasn't got a large enough capacity to cut this. I'm not going to do it on the bandsaw because it would leave a rough cut either side. I don't have a table saw, but I do have an MFT table. And that's where this table really comes into its own for doing uh, accurate straight cuts like this. Cuts at 90 degrees. It, this is perfect for doing it and it's extremely accurate. So that's what we're going to use. So I have my fence set up here. I'm going to put my uh, chopping board against it. I have another fence that I made here and that is that gives me about 54 millimeters as a stop block. That will allow for the curve for the blade. It'll give me just over 50 millimeters then or just over two inches so it'll give me plenty to sand with because maple does burn when you cut into it. It's kind of hard to stop that from happening so there will be a bit of sanding top and bottom to get rid of those burn marks and uh, it's quite hard end grain on maple as well to sand so we'll have a good bit of sanding to do. So anyway we're all set up like I said we're going to be against our fence. This will give me a perfect right angle cut with my track saw set up my track right here, snap it onto the dogs, and now I know that I'm at a perfect right angle, and that is good. So our very first thing we need to do is do a truing cut on the end of this, so that's what we're gonna do. And I left it long enough so we have about 100 mil to spare once I do all my cuts. So we'll cut it all and we'll have a couple of spare pieces as well. Let's do it. Okay guys, I've just changed my setup slightly there, so it's got a little bit of a few issues on that cut. The track was wandering a bit. Now, the reason being my uh, super dogs, my UJK super dogs are a little bit short. You can actually get taller ones of these, but I don't have them. So the clips were popping off the top. So uh, the track was moving because there's a lot of pressure on the saw going through this now. So you're actually pulling and pushing the track. So you need that as stable as possible. So I'm actually using now my Souter Shop uh, bench dogs. These are the magnetic stainless steel ones. So you, they come with the rare earth magnets that slip into the Festival or Makita track and they really lock it on. It's nice and handy. That's actually quite a great system. So I'm going to use that and then I'm going to clamp my 
um, board for each cut just to stop it pulling away from the fence because like I said uh, this is a tough cut for my track saw to make so the, it's stressing it a small bit so the blade can catch and pull the piece so I want to make sure everything is good and stable and as accurate as a, it can possibly be so let's get on we're going to make our first cut I've done the truing cut now that's against my fence so now we're going to cut um, all our blocks or our strips for our next glue ups let's do that Okay guys, there we go, we are all caught up. Now that was a pretty tough cut for my um, track saw, but that's a pretty powerful one. I think the Bosch is one of the most powerful on the market. It has a few flaws, but one thing it doesn't lack, and that's power, and going through two inch maple is a tough cut. So I have a couple of born marks. Um, some sides are actually better than others. It's kind of unavoidable when you're trying to do these cuts. Even on a table saw, you get some burn marks on maple. It's pretty notorious for burning. So there'll be a lot of sanding on this, but I don't mind that. Now, we need to get this orientated for the glue up. This glue up, I'm gonna have to make sure that we keep all the ends perfectly flush because these walnut stripes have to be perfectly aligned. So that's one thing we have to watch out for. Another thing we have to watch out for is we kind of have light, dark, light, dark on some things. So we can actually catch some of these and flip them around and we can play around with the orientation. We can flip every second one or, you know, just play around with it until you kind of see a pattern that you like. So if some squares are dark, some squares are light, you can kind of mix them up maybe, get a slight checkerboard effect, see how you like it. So I'm gonna play around with this. I'll see what orientation I think looks best. And uh, then we'll get up and we'll do the gluing process. Let's do that. Okay guys, I have everything orientated the way I wanted. Actually, some of these pieces are a little bit thicker than other ones so it didn't come perfectly off the track saw so I'll have a bit of sanding maybe even a bit of end grain planing to do to get this nice and flat but we're pretty good other than that now like I said the only thing I have to pay attention to here is keeping these walnut strips or all these lines perfectly aligned so I have uh, my off cut here has a perfect straight edge so I'll be using that on the back just to align everything I have my clamping cause ready to go I have a damp cloth ready to wipe off the excess so we're good to go i have plenty of glue this time i kind of left it a bit fine on the first glue up i just ran out right at the end and i'm trying a new glue uh, kit from rockler uh, bought this with my own money it's not advertisement or not this is not paid for but uh, i'm going to give this guy this applicator a whirl looks quite good so we'll try it out and uh, yeah let's get our glue up ready so i'm ready to go with a little test run so i know exactly how this is going to go together so it's a case let's just get on now and do this Okay, hey, that's all my glue surfaces exposed. Let's give this applicator a whirl and see how it goes. Plenty of coverage. We do not want this board splitting apart or cracking apart. So, uh, okay. That looks pretty good. So the main thing, I wanna keep this square so that everything lines up nicely. That is the most important part of this. Let's get that clamp tightening up there now. Okay guys, there we go. Glue ups are always a little bit stressful, especially when you're trying to get everything aligned up, but that's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out, so we should be good to go. So I can do no more with that other than leave it set up. That little tool actually was quite good. I quite liked that, it worked quite well. So yeah, that comes recommended. Um, I'll see how it gets on over the next few glue ups. But uh, yeah, that's the final glue up for this board. It's sanding and shaping and doing all the little detail work is what's gonna be coming up next. So I'm gonna leave this for a few days and you guys are gonna jump join me in a few days time, which will just be a few seconds for you, but a few days for me. So I'll see you then. Okay guys, so it is a few days later again. We are out of the clamps. We are all glued up and I'm just flattening the top again. So. 
This side, I just hit with the hand plane. It's relatively flat. Now I've got lots and lots of sanding to do on this. And this is actually going to be the top. So I'm going to just hit this with the hand plane now. So there is some ridges. Um, there's some high and low spots. I just want to take it down. Now planing end grain is tough work. So a razor sharp hand plane is required. Um, you're never going to take a full end shaving off this. So it's just work down the high spots. We do the rest with the orbital sander and work from the edges in. Because if you work out to the edge of the end grain, you just blow out that end grain. So we always want to be working in towards the center. And I'm just going to be taking down the high spots. So again, just a number five and a half. And we just, anywhere we have a high spot, we're just going to work it down. And like I said, a razor sharp plate is required for this. And just some elbow grease. And you can actually plane down that end grain. Okay, so I've leveled most of it with the hand plane. Now taking down all the high spots. Now we have to sand and it's hours of sanding. So I'm just gonna take a pencil. I'm just gonna lightly scribe the whole top, the whole way across. And when I, when I see all the pencil mark is removed, I've, I know I'm good and that I've sanded the whole area pretty evenly. So we wanna try and remove all that pencil mark. Just nice light marks. It'll give me a good point of reference for to use with the sander. Starting on 60 grit, working my way up to 240. Now, this is just time and elbow grease and patience to get this right. So I crack on and get sanding. I won't bore you guys with it, but I'll show you the finished product. Okay guys, so it's been a few hours of sanding and it is now as smooth as silk and I'm really happy with the finish. I took it up to 240 grit, 120 would probably be fine, but I took it up to 240 grit and like I said, it is perfectly smooth now and I'm really happy with the top. So the top definitely looks better than the bottom, so there's definitely an A and a B side. Now, a couple of decisions to make from this point on is how you're going to style it, or what way you want to put handles in it, do you want to put handles in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the top and bottom with a round over bit. Then I'm going to put two hand holes in the bottom on either side just for lifting it up. Now, I'm going to be putting feet on this, so four rubber feet on the end of it. They're not 100% necessary, but they do just, if there's a wet surface or something like that, it keeps the butcher block just up off the wet surface and it can help with a bit of hygiene and stuff. But this is plenty heavy that it doesn't need rubber feet. That's not, you know, that won't move around too much when you're chopping. Um, it's a good heavy block, so you could have it as a double-sided block and be able to use both sides. Absolutely no problem there whatsoever. Um, but like I said, I'm going to add four feet to this. So, it's going to hit this now with a roundover bit. I'm just going to run a test piece through the router to make sure I'm happy with the roundover bit. And then we're going to put two handles in the bottom. We get the feet on and then we're almost ready to apply the finish. So let's do that. Okay guys, I've hit all the corners and edges with the round over bit nails to protect them. Stop you knocking any bits off the corner and it softens up the edges. I'll have to go back over that now with a 240 grit sandpaper just to touch it all up. Now I just want to put hand holes in the bottom of this. So I have my round bit in my uh, router. I've set up my two feather boards either side. They're going to act as stops. I'm just going to push my piece into it. And then when it hits the other feather board over here, I know I've got far enough and I'm putting my hand holes in the center and where they need to be. So it's just a case of push this guy in. It's a, a guided bit, so it can't go in too far. I'm just gonna run it across, so nice and simple. Let's do that. Thank you. 
Okay guys, all the routing is done and thank goodness because the routing always makes me nervous. If it goes wrong, it can knock a big chunk of the piece off on you and it can be a bit of a nightmare. So we have two nice hand holes in the bottom of it. Now I didn't make them too deep because this will be on feet again and it's literally just to get your fingers in there, lift it up and catch it. Just help you lift it up off the worktop. That's all they are there for. Now I have a bit of hand sanding to do so I want to hand sand all these edges that the router has cut and I need to hand sand in here as well just to get rid of any little burn marks from the router bit on the maple and we should be good to go. Then it's a case of get the feet in place and then we get the finish on. So I'll get on and hand sand this and then I'll jump back in when it's time to put on the feet. Let's do that. Okay guys, so we are nearly there. I have the four feet now in place. So I just took a force a bit, drilled the exact diameter of the four rubber feet, just to recess them in a bit, so they're not sticking out. It just looks a little bit neater. So it's just gonna sit on the four of these feet now, just like that. What I'm feeling with there. So it's rocking. There we go. So just like that. So it's good and solid, it's not gonna slip. It's up off a wet surface, so water is not going to lodge underneath it. And it's easy now to grip with the two hand holes either side and just lift it up and put it away. So it's ready for the finish. Now, this is my favorite part of any project. I'm going to use some of this food safe finish from Chestnut. Whatever you use on your butcher's block or your cutting board, make sure it is food safe. You can get butcher block oil and it will need to be treated regularly with some sort of a wax just to keep it protected. Again, whatever you treat it with, make sure it's designed for the purpose and it's safe to use on a cutting board. You don't want anything with chemicals in it that's not safe to use with food. So a natural beeswax with just pure beeswax in it, nothing else. Uh, some, a lot of the beeswax will have turpentine and stuff like that in it, so you don't want to use that. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get some of this on it and uh, it'll be almost ready to go. Let's do it. Okay, I've been for a close-up there, so you can see the oil going on. Like I said, this is always my favorite part. So, this could take multiple coats. End grain can be quite thirsty. It's essentially a series of straws uh, all pointing up now, so it can soak into the wood, but we'll put in as much as this board requires. So if it takes five or six coats, so be it. Um, but let's get the first one on because seeing the first one go on always looks good. Now, like I said, there's no colorant in this stuff whatsoever. So, um, it's not gonna change the color of the wood in any way, shape or form. But uh, yeah, that looks pretty nice now, I have to say. Really happy with how that turned out. So I'm just gonna keep rubbing this in according as it needs it. Let it disappear into that end grain. We get multiple coats into it. And uh, it's almost ready to go. So there you go, Can you see that? Pretty nice indeed. Okay guys, there we go. Feet are on in place. I have multiple coats of oil gone into this now. I might even get a few more on it and then we'll get a coat of natural beeswax on it. But that's what we're gonna leave it there for this video. It's more or less all complete and hopefully you've enjoyed that one. It's gonna make an absolutely fantastic gift for somebody. Uh, end grain cutting boards are the most sought after cutting boards. That's what all the professional chefs and stuff use. Like I said at the start of the video, end grain is a much more durable cutting board. Um, it also hides the knife marks better and it doesn't dull the blade. So if you're really into your knives, you really like your cooking and you put a razor sharp edge on that cooking knife, it won't dull as quickly as a plastic or even a glass uh, cutting board will. So the end grain ones, these are the most desirable. And this is gonna make a great gift, like I said. So it's a nice and simple build. There's not too much to it. It's a relatively simple pattern, but it looks quite good. And like I said, you can make these as complex as you like. So hopefully you've enjoyed that one guys and hopefully you've got something out of it. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. Any comments, any questions, as always, leave them below. I will get back to you. Thanks to everybody over on Patreon who continue to support the channel. Very much appreciated guys. So that's it. I'm going to get out of here now. I'm going to be making more gift ideas coming up in future videos. So stay tuned for that one. Until then guys, take it easy.